war and for the first time in the history of man, nations combined to fight against nations using the crude weapons of those days. The Second World War involved every continent on the globe, and men turned to science for new devices of warfare, which reached an unparalleled peak in their capacity for destruction. And now, fought with the terrible weapons of super science, menacing all mankind and every creature on Earth, comes the War of the Worlds. Hello again, modeling brethren, and welcome back to the Gearhead Workshop Workbench. Yeah, this is going to be uh, kind of a short update too on uh, the uh, Pegasus Martian War Machine that we're building for Gene Davis. Um, we just got in uh, part of our lighting kit that we're going to be using for this. Uh, we got the uh, the Martian War Machine lighting kit from uh, Tenet Controls. And uh, this is a little manual that comes with the, with the lighting kit. Um, pretty comprehensive lighting kit. You also get a, uh, a YouTube link to uh, go over some of how the lighting goes in. And as always, Ralph gives a pretty nice schematic. And he talks about uh, how you, uh, where all of your LEDs will hook in, uh, the color code wise to the effect board. And uh, in this kit we get um, Two green 1.8 LEDs for uh, the side glow wingtips. Uh, you get uh, three 5 millimeter green LEDs for the bottom saucer glow effect. And you get a green LED strip for uh, the uh, front lens in the saucer. And you get uh, two 1.8 green LEDs for the uh, side laser effects and a uh, white red bicolor 3 millimeter LED for the eye ray for the cover head. And uh, he just talks about how the uh, how the board functions on on this page here, and uh, he also gives you uh, some photos of uh, how the basic wiring should be laid out, where the LEDs go, where the tape strip goes, and uh, there's also another page of the other half of the saucer, the lower half, showing you a wiring layout for that, and of course you get your 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 five year warranty, Ralph. Ralph he pretty much uh, warranties everything for five years, so this just goes over your warranty. And uh, kind of pull some of the stuff over here for the kit. I've already opened this up, but we'll kind of take a look at what's in here. And uh, this is the uh, the LED strip. This is like a single density green uh, LED strip that runs on up to 12 volts. We're going to be running this on. Um, Probably three uh, 18650 rechargeables that are uh, they come in at 3.7 volts a cell. So 3.7 times 3 in series will give us like 10.4 volts. So we'll be safely under 12 volts and get plenty of power. And the other thing you get, uh, this is some of the stuff that we're not going to be using, but it does come with the kit. You get a 9 volt battery plug. This can be run off of a 9 volt battery. And you get your uh, three momentary switches to activate the functions. And uh, there's a couple of extra LEDs that are still in here that, that I'm not needing. They're just still in the bag. And uh, I've taken some of this off, but Ralph gives you some some ribbon wiring cable that you can strip down and use for some of your wiring. And you also get uh, a little bundle of heat shrink tubing. And you get your appropriate resistors for your LEDs. And uh, these are some of the LEDs that I'm going to use, which uh, we'll talk about this real quick. Uh, some people may know, some people may not. But um, what we've done with these LEDs, uh, I've sanded these up with some 180 grit sandpaper to help diffuse the light so they don't look hot spotty. And these are the three for under the saucer. And uh, we've got the... Uh, the two 1.8s for the side glow, which uh, this was just, you know, my call. Uh, I just went ahead and sanded the tips off of these and made it into a flat LED. And those have been sanded with the 182 to diffuse the light out and get a, get a nice glow going on. And we got the, the two 1.8s for the laser flash effect, which um, I'll go ahead and left those clear. So they, they will be a little flashier than the, uh, the glow LED. So we're hoping that that ends up looking pretty good. And the last thing is, uh, this is the uh, the three millimeter bicolor LED, 
uh, which you get three leads, you get a hot for each color and a ground. And uh, I've taken this and uh, kind of sanded it down around the outside, but I've left the very tip clear to make it kind of flashy, but I want it to diffuse out from the sides. So hopefully that, that works out good for us. And we're also going to be getting a, um, a remote control board from Ralph. I haven't got that yet, but we'll go over that when we get it to. And this is uh, the main control board for all the effects. And uh, kind of requested this, Gene wanted this. Uh, Ralph modified this for us and uh, hooked in an external audio jack. He's going to hook this into an external powered speaker. So we've got like a a little mini stereo jack here that we're going to end up plugging the speaker into off of the base. So that should work out pretty cool. And the, the board looks pretty nice. You've got the micro plug connectors on here with all your color coded wire. So you can use your schematic and the, uh, the written diagrams to hook everything up right. Ralph is pretty good about making things pretty simple to install as long as you don't get a get into creating a really complicated setup or anything. Everything's usually pretty straightforward. I've never had any problems with anything from Ralph. So, for, for the lighting kit, I guess that's about it. Um, we'll go over a couple of other things that I've, that I've started doing with the kit here. Uh, one is, uh, we've taken the, uh, the plaque from the kit and cut it away from the stock base because we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using a, like a wooden box with a wooden circular base top and the whole thing is going to go under a glass dome eventually. And uh, I just took this and cut it away and cleaned up the edges and um, primed it and shot it with some um, some pewter gray craft acrylic and then did a black wash on it and we've also gone in, you probably can't see it on camera, but some of the little specks of stone dust have been done like a khaki and I mixed up a bright green for the uh, for the lettering and let's see get some stuff out of the box here um, I think I went over this before but this is the cobra head I have gone back in and I cut out a little bit more of the the kit plastic in here so uh, when I put the lens in, I can actually get the LED kind of up into the lens. Uh, the way it was, it was going to be just kind of behind it. But I wanted to get it up in there good, you know, to you know, get some good diffusion of the light going on inside the lens. So we've done that and had to um, open up my trench here for the wiring a little bit more for the three wires. It was a little tight and everything's good now. I can actually put the, put the bicolor in there and close the clamshell up and the wire will still slide back and forth in there which the plan is hopefully to um, put the LED in there and mask it and uh, later on we'll be able to reach in there and pull the LED out and put the lens on and then put the lens in after the sink is painted and uh, I'm not going to go over the uh, neck we already did that in the last one that's been opened up for wiring Let's get a couple other things out here. I forgot whether I went over this in the last video or not, but we'll go over it again, if just in case. I didn't mention it in the last video. Uh, we've done all these clear green parts. Um, I've shot these inside and out with a couple of coats of a Krylon Matte Clear to kind of frost them and help with light diffusion. And just to kind of make them stand out a little different from the way the rest of the uh, ship's going to look. The rest of the ship's going to be, uh, you know, like a copper metallic with a clear coat. And we're probably going to end up doing some type of weathering on it. But this is the front lens. And um, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to need it all. But we've made up some other diffusion stuff for this, which... Uh, I need a shout out to Boyd over at Trekworks. He likes to use this stuff and... That's kind of where I've gotten it from, and I haven't, you haven't used it too much, but we might use it on this one. Is um, one um, this is my kind of little rig here. Um, I've taken some three millimeter foam, like the you know craft board foam you can get at Dollar General and Walmart, um, uh, either Elmer's board or Adams foam board, and uh, I've stripped the paper off of both sides and sanded this down really thin, and just you know cut it as a template and this is just stuck in there 
and that that's going to be one light diffusion we're going to try if we think we need it and the other thing was what I was saying about Boyd likes to do this um, we use some old milk jug uh, just cut some pieces out of the milk jug and I sand the back side of it we've got one piece cut that may just get glued right behind the other diffuser or we may not use this we might just use this and if we need to go any further than that I've cut a larger piece that will actually go inside the ship and be somewhat like about that far behind it you know it'll be curved of course but uh, I think we've pretty much got it covered like well we got enough stuff to experiment with to get uh, the look we want with with the front lens without getting any hot spots or anything and uh, these are the little three gravity I'm gonna call them gravity thrusters or whatever uh, we've like I say with all these green parts we frosted these inside and out a couple of times with some matte clear and I had some um, some foam and you can see it's a little white in there and that's what it is some of this little foam it's a real veiny looking foam and I'll kind of cut it down real thin and I'm putting that in there too to help maybe diffuse the light and also uh, when you put a light behind it it actually looks kind of alien uh, when it lights up you can kind of see some little vein work in there so we're probably going to we're probably going to go with that. I think it looks kind of cool. I built one of these before and I, I did the same thing. And I've actually got it in these wingtips now too, but uh, we may take that back out just so it blends in with the uh, the front lens because I've tried to make a piece of it to put in the front lens and it, it just doesn't look good in the front lens. So we're not going to do that there. And we may end up ditching it here too and just leave just the clear part and take take the foam out. And let's see, we'll get all this stuff back in our box so nothing gets away from us. And uh, we'll go over a couple of couple of little things on the, the main saucer of the ship. Uh, we've got our bottom half and our top half. And we've got a couple other little things here we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about that lens again too. Um, one is uh, the cobra head in this thing. It does it does move. It swivels. Uh, it's made that way when they make the kit. But um, the setup they have is you put this plug into the top, and uh, you get like a flange screw that's supposed to hold it on here. And I've gone in here and cut some stuff away. There was this little nub here is actually the bottom of this part. There was a piece of tube coming up here, you know, like these guys, you know, for your pin, your, what I call a pin boss that accepts a pin from the other half. So I've cut that off flush, and we put this through, and we've cut this nub down almost to nothing. And uh, part of the, uh, the tube that we cut off is now going to be like a little washer there that slides down against that. And we're going to run a little bit of epoxy around there so this thing is actually locked in now. Like if the screw is still in so it, it can't come out but we still got our, our little pass through for our wiring for the, uh, the bicolor LED. And on the bottom, I've been trying to work out like a little mounting solution. Um, before, um, the tube and the, the part of the plug that I cut off used to come down into this. And uh, we've got like about a 5 16 11 30 second hole here. So what's going to happen is uh, we've got a steel washer that I've kind of roughed up with some sandpaper. And what we're going to do is uh, we've got this too. This is like a little uh, Teflon split washer. And I'm not sure if we'll put it in this way or whether we're going after that. But we'll have that washer in there. A little split washer of Teflon. And then we're going to take this washer and epoxy it right over top of that we'll epoxy it to it and then build up epoxy around it and maybe up onto the up onto the top face of it to lock that on there and the hole in the washer is a little bit smaller than the hole in here so when we bring our base pole up it'll be buttoned against that and we'll have, still have the hole to bring our all our wiring down out of the ship through the pole so hopefully that works out pretty nifty for us and um, I guess the last thing I said it's going to be a short update. Is uh, I worked on the lens a little bit more. The red insert for the lens, I went in there and basically gutted that. It had a little, I don't know, like a little 
thingy inside there. That's it. We'll call it a thingy. Well, I went in there and cut all that out, and it's basically just the front of the lens and the little surround. It's all open in there now. So I could get the uh, bicolor LED actually up inside of there. And I'm not sure if this is going to work yet or whether we're going to use it, but I made a little backer out of some 040 styrene, 40,000 styrene, and I drilled a little hole in there so we can hopefully, like I said, once we get the Cobra head together and the, the bicolor LEDs in there, we'll be able to pull it out, mount this little backer onto the LED, and then stick it into the lens and shove the lens and the whole assembly up in there. And um, I'm probably going to paint the back side of this with a little bit of black. And we may paint the other side with uh, gold. We'll just have to see how that goes. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. And uh, I guess, like I said, this one's kind of short. So I guess we're going to go ahead and call it done for update two on this guy. Uh, hopefully we'll have the remote board before too long and we'll go ahead and start putting some lighting in here and uh, when we get a little more ahead we'll be back for uh, update three I guess. So uh, until then uh, everybody take it easy. Uh, happy modeling and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.